Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. What's up, y'all? Today we're taking a look at the road. It is the road, right? To El the Dorado. The road to El Dorado. It's Wettlaufnacht El Dorado. Ein Ziel Townsend. And I'm not trying that word. I apologize for everything. Yeah, that, that was probably not a good pronunciation of anything. Anyway, this is one of the games nominated for the uh, Spiel des Jahres. It mm -hmm. was, there's no English version of the game yet. However, it's very easy to play this. Even though there is some text on the cards, there's symbols, it's very easy to play it. Mm -hmm. We want to try it out. Also, it's by Rana Canizia, and it's a deck building game, so Sam was really intrigued. Yeah, Wait. it's a racing game, and I was really intrigued. I was more intrigued by the racing part of it. And I like the deck building part then. I'll take that <laughs> one. And I like the seven cities of gold. Let's start. Each person in this game is going to have a starting deck hand of cards. And so you're going to have three of these machete cards. You'll have four of the cards with money on them and one of the lake cards. You're going to shuffle this and you're going to draw four cards to use on your turn. Now each player is going to start with an explorer. The explorers are going to start in the starting board and you're going to make a path. Now I have a very short one here. Um, this one is just kind of an example. The rule book actually gives several setups that you can use, but it's completely up to you. You really can make any setup you want. You just got to start with the starting board, and then you're trying to get to the city of gold over here. And each of these boards has two sides. There's boards that I'm not using. And in between the boards, there are these passageways that you need to cross, and these can be randomly put out too. There's also some tiles here for a variant. If you want to play with them, you would place them on cave tiles. The first person to go next to a cave tile would get one, and this is kind of a one-use card of sorts. So on your turn, you're going to look at the cards that you have in your hand. You can use these cards to move. So for example, I have three machetes and one coin. So if I was red player, I could go one, two, three, and one, moving, using, moving on to three single spaces and a coin space. As you can see, some spaces are going to require two to get over, so it's going to be more difficult to bypass those. And you can't combine to go on those. You'd have to get a bigger card at some point. So, for example, if I had this card with five, it would actually let me go one, two, three, four, five. Um, but, uh, so you're going to need to get these bigger cards to go onto the bigger spaces. But I can't add two ones together to go onto a two. After you're done moving, if you have any cards left in your hand, or maybe you didn't move, you can use these cards for money to buy another card. Yellow cards are always worth the number on them, so this is worth one gold coin. Every other card, regardless of what it says, is worth half a coin. So really, I might as well use this card because it's worthless anyway, because this is one coin, and that would be two coins. Now when I buy a card, I can only buy one of these cards in the bottom. There's six different cards to buy. I have this card here, which is a wild, one of all three types. Uh, this card here is a two coin, useful for buying more things. I have a two machete and a three machete, also useful for moving around the board. I have this card, which is worth four coins, but when you play this card, it's a one-time use. It's discarded from the game. And this card here, that when I play this, it's discarded from the game, but I can take any card into my discard pile. Any card that you buy, and you can only buy one card, and any, and any cards that you use are discarded. You can keep the rest in your hand if you so desire, and draw up to four. Once your draw pile is completely empty, you will shuffle your discard pile and draw again. Now you can only buy these six cards here. There are three cards of each. When the third card is bought, the next person to buy a card can, instead of buying one of these, buy any card up here. When they buy that card, the other cards are put down here. So they'll choose the next type of cards that can be bought. This is a two wild, this is a four wild, but can only be used once. A five machete, a six machete, but can only be used once. Three money, four money. Up here we got a three uh, river, and then five special cards. 
Now I have a German version, but they're all very simple based on what they have on them. This wants you to draw a card and then cull a card, get rid of it forever. This lets you draw two more cards, draw two cards and get rid of two cards forever. Draw three, but it's a one-time use. And this one lets you move into any type of terrain regardless of what type it is. Now, as you're moving around the board, you'll see most of the terrain here requires machetes or paddles or money. There is mountains and caves which cannot be gone into. There are some gray spots on the board where you simply have to discard a card to go into them or here, discard three cards. Sometimes when you go into a, these campsites here, you have to cull a card, get rid of a card out of your deck, but you might want to do that just to get rid of smaller cards that are not as useful. These here, the boundaries, the first person to go over them must pay the cost. So the first person over here has to play a card that's at least two machetes. They then get to keep this. No one else has to pay that cost and no one has to worry about it. However, at the end of the game, the first person to get to El Dorado wins, but if multiple people get there at the end of the game because you finish out a round, whoever has more of these wins, or if it's a tie, whoever has the highest numbered one wins the tie. And that's basically it. It's a race. First person El Dorado is the winner of the game. Okay, so this is a deck building game mixed with a Ish. race game. And kind of. that's what it is, right? Yep. It's yes. not much more complex than that. Nope. It's a very streamlined game, really, when you take these mechanisms. It's about the simplest racing game you can think of combined with about the simplest deck building game you can think of. Yeah. You're really just trying to find the path of least resistance yep. through the jungle, forest, desert, water, to get to the end. But right. you might go through a path that has more resistance if you have the cards and That's it's true. a shortcut. That's so there, true. I mean, there's some neat things you can do if in that. If you regard. have the cards, correct, which is the linchpin. And the, and the tiles do form in very interesting uh, ways, dead ends and choke points and mm. sort of make you go weird ways if someone's standing in your way, for right. example. And that's interesting. It's something that isn't readily apparent when you first look at the board. Right. And you even think, well, why is this so modular? It rarely mm. matters. It does matter. No, I think it really matters in this game. Yeah, but I mean, if you just look at it and you go, all right, well, it's more grass on this one than water, so I'll get buy more grass cards, you know, or whatever. But, but the way things are laid out is interesting. You can create choke points. You sometimes do have to deal with, oh, I got to cut through this mountain, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to hurt. That's interesting. It's, it's well done. I think the, the job that they did on the tiles is solid. Yeah. My experience with the game is that if you get out in front, mm -hmm. far enough in front, I don't think anybody can stop you. Really? Yeah. I've caught people out in front before. Really? Yeah, I think if you stay back and build your deck up, you can then suddenly just go and move pretty quickly. Yeah, well, there's those tiles you have to cross, and, and you're the only one who pays for them. They're a tiebreaker, yeah, but they will slow you down a little bit. Just a tad. And yeah. I, but I do like that, and I also like the fact that you can really... This game can get mean sometimes. Oh, yeah, You of can course. just yeah, cut yeah. someone off, like, yeah. oh, was I in the spot you were planning to go Reminds next me of Ave Caesar in that part. Yeah, I mean, there's a, little bit, people. there's a little bit more maneuverability in this well, game, yeah, but sometimes, yeah. like, if there's that only that one spot in the grass you can go, and you're like, ah, yeah. I'm just going to sit here and build my deck for a while. Is that okay, guys? <laughs> oh, man. Yes, yes. That would be harsh. That. The tiles are cool. They're double-sided. They look good. I, I wouldn't say they look great, but at least it's very easy to differentiate yeah, what's they're, on them. They're definitely functional, but they're also, they also have an aesthetic appeal to them, but not overly so. They're mainly right. just functional. Right, right. I'm not a huge fan of the cards. I think they're too small. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Hobbit size cards. I don't mind these cards normally, but in this game you are shuffling a lot. I mean, yeah. it's not a big deck. You're never gonna have a huge deck in this game. I just felt like that. that I would have preferred it to be bigger cards. True. Yeah. I, I'm okay with that. I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, they were very legible. They. It, I'm, I was fine with it. It didn't bother me one way or the other. You know. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not the reading on the part because really it's just symbols, but it's the. Yeah, the handling. The handling of them. Mm -hmm. I would have, I would prefer bigger cards, but really it's minor. Now, what, you mentioned this was a very simple deck building game, and it is. But it does have one thing I haven't seen before, and that's where you can only buy six cards. But once a pile is gone, the next person to buy can yeah. buy any card they want, and then that pile comes down. That pile of two cards. Two or three, yeah. right. That's right. one of the neatest mechanics in the game. You like that me. a lot, then? Yeah, I did. I do, too. Really enjoyed it, because it gives you that variability with what you can buy. Not everybody all of the time, but everybody part of the time has that huge variety of things that they can purchase. I like that. I think it just streamlines the the pace at which the game plays. Right. You know what I mean? Every now and then, 
they open up the gates, like you said, and then they bring that back in and talk about you. Just worry about mm-hmm. this. Just buy one of these and, and keep this game Correct. going, you know. Right. And for the target they're going for, which I assume is a family weight style game, definitely, it's a really nice way of gating what you have access to. It's very ingenious. I really like that. Yeah. And the special cards are really simple. Draw some cards, draw yeah. some call cards, and move into a space. Really, really easy. Uh, the, the game is just... I don't know, when it's your turn, it's like, I will do this. You have mm-hmm. a few choices, but usually there's the best path to move through. And your biggest choice is what cards will you buy? And, I, and also you can keep a card. Like, oh, I have this great grass card or machete card, but I can't use it until I go over this river. So I'm going to hang on to it for a turn and hope I get the river card soon. Right, right. I guess my biggest um, problem with the game, and this is not really a problem with the game, it's, it is that when I first played it, I thought huh, this game feels like something that already exists. You know what I mean? It, largely. Except for that mechanism of you can only buy one of these cards. You look at the game, you play the game, and it feels familiar already. Now, is that necessarily bad? No, it's a game that's very easy to teach and play. But it's also, nothing in the game made me think, yes, this is the future of gaming right here. It's a game that feels like it's it's been around almost. It's one of those games that make you feel like, hey, hasn't this been done? You know? It, remi- right. it reminds me a lot of Mississippi Queen. Yeah. Uh, it's a little faster than that. It is, and that's, uh, again, that's an improvement, a good thing. I think. That's a good thing. That's a good, it's a good thing that it plays faster. It plays a lot more simple. There were some more fiddly rules in Mississippi Queen than any of the rules that are in here. Well, that game so, is 22 years old. Exactly. So, yeah. so, I mean, this is an improvement upon that. I, I'm not saying it's a direct improvement upon that, but it, it reminds me of that older game that I really did enjoy, mm-hmm. but it's modern. And so I, I think that's a cool thing. Okay, cool. All right, so what's your final thoughts on The Road to El Dorado? We don't know yet who the American publisher is. Ravensburger themselves might bring it to America, for all we know. Um, I'm assuming it will show up from a company. Um, That's almost a guarantee at this point. Well, it's been nominated for the spiel. Right, Right. if if it wins, 100% guarantee it's coming. But um, for me, I'll give this a a solid machete up. (laughs) Took your machete. Oh, um, my machete. Um, I, I think it's good. It's a easy game to get into, a good race, good deck building. Nothing mind-blowing, nothing like, well, that's... The best thing, I think, is just the fact that the racetracks could be different. Mm-hmm. And while the book has these racetracks you can play on, too, you can really just build any racetrack you want. And really, sure. so you can sure. just also that you can determine the length of the game. I want to play a long game. We're playing a long track or a short one. I find that that's very easy, and that, that, that's my favorite part of it. So, one machete up for me. Okay, I am going to give it uh, a very similar rating. I'm going to give it one gold nugget up, and uh, I enjoy the game quite a bit. As I said, I think the streamlined nature of the whole thing works well, and it's quite possible that if the game does well, and an expansion comes out with more cards, a little more variety, a little more spice, that my rating will go up. But as of right now, what you get in the box... One gold nugget up. I'm going to give it one and a half millionaires up. Millionaire is one of the cards in the game. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I, I really enjoy this level weight of game mm-hmm. a lot. Especially racing games. Right? Yeah, especially mm-hmm. racing games. I don't like them when racing games get too convoluted, take yeah. themselves too seriously, yep. whatever. This one is just a fun family weight, uh, very easy to play racing game. And I also like the theme on top of it. So uh, it's uh, it hit on all the cylinders. Um, it doesn't get too full up just because, you know, I mean, for the time investment, I'd probably maybe rather play something else. But... This one shines in, in, in the spectrum in which it resides. So there you go. The road to El Dorado. Follow us. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs> <laughs>